Ananda. The Buddha continues to talk to Ananda. Ananda, I permitted the bhikkhus in the monks, you know, earlier days, to eat five kinds of pure meat. This meat is actually a transformation brought into being by my spiritual power. I mean, the Buddha manifested it, used his power to make the meat for these bhikkhus because they probably live in an area where the vegetables don't grow or they are not used to it or maybe they're sick or something or nobody give them the vegetarian food, something like that. So the Buddha manifested some so-called meat to give to these uh, bhikkhus, the uh, monks, yeah? So it basically has no life force, fat meat, yeah? And nowadays they are also trying to make that. <laughs> you Brahmins live in a climate so hot and humid and on such sandy and rocky land that vegetables will not grow. I was right. The vegetables cannot grow there. So the Buddha manifests it for his disciples, monks who eat. Mm. Therefore, I have had to assist you with spiritual powers and compassion. Because of the magnitude of this kindness and compassion, what you eat that tastes like meat is merely said to be meat. In fact, however, it is not meat. See that? Oh. Same in the Bible. God has also manifested manna. Yeah? Probably God at the time was manifested in a physical form as a master. In the Bible, God manifests manna for them to eat. And then one time, uh, God so called his disciple or believer of God also asked God mockingly. In the old time, it say that you manifest the manna to our ancestors to eat. Why don't you manifest meat for us? Yeah, and God did manifest meat. Rain down meat for them to eat. And after that, it destroyed them all. So in the Bible also say meat for the belly, belly for the meat, but God shall destroy both meat and them. So both of this uh, um, religion that I'm, I am acquainted with say the same thing, more or less. Except that.